have a packed house. Over 10,000 people are going to watch G2 or Rogue hoist the LEC trophy today. It is a rematch of the Spring Finals, and we are hoping for fireworks. And we're starting with fireworks uh, on my desk. We're missing the physical desk, but we have the style. We've got Reckless, we've got Goldberg, and we've got Broxa. Um, yeah. Yeah, give it up for my analysts. Roxa, yesterday we already got to stand on the stage and it was wonderful, but there's a whole new vibe in the air now that we've got the grand final. Oh, definitely. Like the semi finals are always exciting, but you can already feel that the atmosphere in here is already at a whole new level, so it's going to be wild today. It's crazy. Um, Martin, do you think they're going to clap at everything we say? That would be great. Most likely, yeah. Most I think the Swedish crowd so far has been amazing, and I hope that today is even better than yesterday. Yes. Thank you so, guys. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> I'm going to allow you to do the honors to kick us off in terms of the day. Yesterday, of course, we saw that Rogue beat Fnatic, and we have a rematch of the Spring Final in G2 versus Rogue kick us off. And what an incredible way to do it as well for Rogue. So many times they've been doubted, not only by the fans, but probably also by themselves. I think going into today, they're in the lucky position where G2 are seen as favorites, and there's less pressure to work with. But yesterday, we certainly saw them get across the first hurdle where they at least got through the Fnatic series and could start up against G2 today. Yeah, it did very much feel like it was a bit of a different road, right, in order to beat Fnatic, which not a lot of people expected. Well, all of us predicted Fnatic to win yesterday for a good reason, because Fnatic had just looked so amazing in the lower bracket. But Rogue, they leveled up big time. They were so good at adapting. They were so good at finding Fnatic's weaknesses and just come, came out on top in the end. Martin, it looked like they just stepped up to the pressure and they had the better game plan. Yeah, definitely. And I also think they found a good way to be rogue yesterday. I think in the G2 series, last time they played, it was almost like they were stressed out by the fact that it was G2. It was going to be a bit more crazy. But yesterday, it felt more like a rogue series. Slow and steady, a lot of team fighting. And I think that's what they're going to have to push the series towards today as well to win. Yeah, it was pretty clean from rogue. That means we said goodbye to Fnatic. We'll, of course, see them at Worlds. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is a disappointment, I think, for all the fans. But also from an objective lens, they can be better than what we saw yesterday. So I don't think they'll be too happy with that. Oh, definitely. Fnatic went big this offseason. We expected a lot from them in the lower bracket. And I think, you know, for all Fnatic fans, it's going to be a disappointment not seeing them winning the split even. But at the same time, they've shown good improvement throughout the split. And hopefully, we can see a good Fnatic coming into Worlds. Yeah, and I think it's also important to mention that this whole year has been a roller coaster, roller coaster for them. And having experiences like this, going into World Championship, is actually maybe a beneficial thing, especially playing the planes as well. You have a lot of momentum, you have a lot of time to figure things out. So when it really matters, when the group stage comes around, if they make it there, I think they're going to be a better team than otherwise. And if anything, Fnatic proved that they now have the individuals. We saw each and every one of them step up at different times for the roster. Yeah, they weren't able to do it as a full roster yesterday, but I think in general, I'm hopeful for what they can achieve. And as you're saying, like having to go up through that, uh, well, not per se lower bracket, but playing into Play worlds <laughs> would be very good for Fnatic. Yeah, let's see if they, together with the Mad Lions, can clean it up and make it to the group stage. G2 and Rogue already find themselves locked in the group stage, and they are, of course, playing our final today. But we also opened our LEC Expo yesterday. This is right next to the arena, and we got some highlights for you. Let's take a look. I'm Frankie Ward, and I'm in Sweden, or more specifically Malmo, for the LEC Playoffs Finals, but also for the LEC Expo, where there's so much going on. If you're here for the finals, it's a must-see. So let's go inside and see what they have in store. here at the LEC Summer Playoffs 2022. <laughs> Beautiful G2 tattoo. That's not a permanent tattoo, is it? No, no, it's just from these quick tattoos. But you know, you could take that to a tattoo shop and get it permanent if you really want to win Carlos's favor. Maybe if they win Worlds, I'll get a tattoo. 
He needs some milk. Is that meant to be like Alistair or something? How many other purple girls do you know? Are there any champions you'd like to see pop up in Champion Select today? Well, pick Timo. Do you think that's a popular sign? No. Weighing in line to meet the man, the myth, the legend, the bouse. How are you finding the LEC Expo? Uh, it's very overwhelming. It looks pretty fun. Who are you going to be cheering for? I want Fnatic to win over Rogue. And then in the finals, I hope G2 wins. All right, Frankie, welcome to the G2 Wheel of Fortune. And let's see, what are you going to get? What? Carlos, how do you do me like this? It wouldn't be a playoffs without Carlos's face appearing on the broadcast. And I found him on someone else's chest. Hello, sir. Hello, Hello Carlos. He's unusually quiet today. Uh, tell me about the look that you're sporting, sir. It's kind of unique. Like, I get a lot of comments on it. Are they compliments? Yeah. There's some hardcore gameplay going on in the Rogue booth, so I'm going to go and investigate. I don't want to interrupt and distract you during this clearly intense moment, but what the hell is going on? I mean, I'm trying to beat my nephew. <laughs> Your nephew? Who is better at League of Legends? I am. I might have to talk to the nephew. Hello, I've been paid by your uncle to come and distract you in game. How's it going? Um, right now I'm winning, so it's fine. He says he's better at League of Legends than you. Uh, no, I, I mean, he and me are like the biggest enemies. Oh shit. Reckless is one of my favorite players. I've met Reckless several times in Rotterdam, in Athens, in Berlin, in France, in Madrid. One of the lovely things about League of Legends live events is the sense of camaraderie and making friends. So why on earth have you made this? You're trying to make some enemies here. The community stage has been taken over by G2's mic check. What chaos have you created behind us? Listen, there's no better way to connect with a fellow human being than music. Whether it's good or not, that's really beside the point. It's all about putting it to the test, stepping on the stage in front of all these people. I think it's a beautiful thing. If I want to dress up as anyone, I want to dress up as the guys that make me watch the games. And the best look, it's ready. It's reckless with my heart. What else would you pick? What is it you love about G2? Uh, the spirit. We are bold. We are everywhere. I love it. G2 Army. I've got to ask you, Anna, then, who are you rooting for? I'm cheering for Shelly. Since Stockholm, I've been a huge Fnatic fan, but then Rogue has Odo, so I'm kind of happy whoever wins. But can either of these teams beat G2? I hope so. I know so. Are you feeling ready to make some noise for G2? Yes! It has to be 3-0 because I have a bus at 10. And if it's Silver Scrapes, I can't watch it to the end. You heard this man, G2. You need to get it done in 3-0 or he doesn't get to go home. He's going to be sleeping in a bus shelter. We don't want that. Well, that's it for my time here at the LEC Expo. I'm going to head into the arena because there's only one more thing left to do, and that's to crown a champion. Oh, wonderful, Frankie. Uh, just great that you're getting those sights and sounds from the expo. Uh, and shout out to uh, the Vettius fan. That is so sweet. I'm sure he'll be really happy before his cast. But now time for some very serious business. Yeah, I know. You don't know what's coming. I do. In fact, it is the great Denmark versus Sweden quiz. Representing Team Denmark, Broxa and Goldborg. <laughs> Representing Team Sweden, Treats and Reckless! <laughs> So, here are the rules of the game. I'm going to ask you uh, a couple of questions. Now, you can discuss amongst yourselves, and the moment you put your flag up, you have to give me the answer. If it is wrong, the enemy team gets a chance to answer. If you're both wrong, tough luck. But you each have a helpline. Frankie is in the crowd. And if you want the help from our audience, by the way, you can be spies, and if it's Team Denmark, give them the wrong answer. If you're Swedish, I don't know, just a suggestion. Um, but you have that at your disposal. 
Are you guys ready? Do you understand the rules of the game? Ready. Got it. Cool. Let's do it. Uh, you can also play in Discord, um, discord.lec.gg, and I'm sure you'll win, as you always do. First question. Uh, oh, how do we decide who goes first, actually? Uh, can someone, production, can you toss a coin? Whoever lists the flag first and one, two, three can start. Who, yeah, okay. <laughs> Got him. Ah. Uh, oh, no, I'm stupid. Um, I'm an idiot. This was a test run. It's only if you know the answer. Oh. I swear we practiced this. All right. No, officially, our first question is the following. Okay. This is our 20th final in LEC history. But how many of those went to game five and thus silver scrapes? Oh, there's, it's multiple choice, sorry. <laughs> Three, four, five, or six. <laughs> I'm the best quiz master alive. <laughs> Is it up? Uh, we guess five. Correct, Team Sweden, one point. <laughs> Good job, Team Sweden. Um, the next question is not multiple choice. You will see on the monitor an event, and you have to tell me when this moment happened. Um, so basically, let's say if you get the season correct, so spring or summer of a year, you get the point. You can... Martin? Yes, Martin? This was uh, my first game in 2014, spring against Kemp. Correct! Woo! That's so rigged! That is what so is rigged! That's not let's go! go. Fnatic versus Gambit. Did you win that game? We did win that game. You won that game? Yep. Yeah, uh, you're winning this one That's as well. That's when I had that play, the cool play. Is this a crazy play? Yeah, you missed it. But oh, I missed it. <laughs> it's been a long time ago. 2-0 uh, for Sweden. Um, it's fine. You can still come back. No. No? Uh, another one. It's also multiple choice. How many different organizations have played in an LEC final? 9, 11, 13, or 14? It's important I would just up your flag and do something because if they do it first and they get it right. Yes, Denmark? We're gonna guess nine. Incorrect. It's okay. We would like to ask the crowd if that's okay. You would like to ask the crowd? Yeah, yeah that's okay. You can, Frankie. Uh, what do they think, the crowd? Nine, 11, well, 11, 13, or 15? I have got William with me. Do you need the question repeated? Uh, no. You know the answer. Yeah, of course, it's 13. Is it 13? Fantastic! And William is actually Danish, you're also a traitor! Thank you, William! Wait, they were supposed to say if they believe them, but oh. I guess we, sp we spilled the beans. <laughs> Just... Yeah, we, we believe it. I swear we've been set up for failure! What's of actually course. happening? Woo! Oh, my! <laughs> ah, hang on, hang on. My producer tells me the audience gets the point, but I don't think that's the way it's for it to work. We're, we're in Sweden. <laughs> we're in Sweden. Uh, you know what? We'll roll with it. It's not that serious. Um, <laughs> we still have two. This is a really interesting one. So it's still 2-0. You can still make it, thanks to the producer and his shenanigans. How many barons have been slain in LEC history? 1,786, 2,222, 3,159, or 3,998. So A, B, C, D, or uh, A, B, C, D. <laughs> yes. C. Incorrect. So, yeah. That was already a lot. Oh, uh, it's We would like to guess 2.4K. 2,400? Uh, no, it was multiple choice. Oh, was uh, so is it was the, it remaining B, yeah. Yeah. the remaining option? Option B. Are, Sorry. Option B is yeah. 2,222. Are you, yeah, are you that sure? One sounds good. That's yeah. incorrect. <laughs> oh, we would like to guess the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Ask the audience. You know Maybe what? We'll keep going. We'll keep going. You can get a point. Guess the next one. A or D. A or D. You go. You go. The pressure's on you. D. 50. 50. Correct. One point. Hey! For Next question, we have two left. Um, I don't know if we're going over time or how much time we have for this. This is, this is fun. Okay, look at the screen, please. What happens next? This is not multiple choice. What happens next? Basically, 
Yes, Reckless, what happens next? You know, they almost kill the Nexus, but not quite. Unicorns clean up and win this game. Correct. Woo! This is so close, actually. Fnatic has a lot of those moments, it seems like. <laughs> they almost kill the Nexus. But yeah, the Unicorns of Love are going to make it. Um, I think it's mathematically impossible for Team Denmark to win. But of course. But I'll still like the question, because it would be really embarrassing if you only get one correct. <laughs> Just saying. I hate you. You hate me? <laughs> oh my god. Um, OK. Which champion has the most kills in LEC history, is it Lucian? Is it Ezreal? Is it Lee Sin? Or is it Orianna? For honor, just say something. Do you want to ask the audience or you know? We want to ask the crowd. The crowd, okay. Frankie, uh, Lucian, Ezreal, Lee Sin, or Orianna? And so basically, they have to decide if they believe that answer or not, just to be clear. William, do it for the Danes. Get the answer right, my friend. Yeah, well, there's a. Uh, this champion is definitely against the Church of Chovy. I'm going to go Lee Sin. <laughs> He's going Lee Sin. Is he right? Do you believe him? Do you believe is, he, is he Swedish? I don't know. He's Danish. He's, He's Danish. Danish. He's we Danish. believe him. We believe him. No, no you're wrong. <laughs> A troll, and I love it. Uh, the answer is Lucian. Team Sweden wins! Woo! Excellent. As they do their victory lap, um, because we took a little bit too much time. <laughs> There's one more thing. It looks like the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, uh, we also have something else special prepared, and I swear this is the last funny thing before we get into the series business. Um, we also have a special bingo card prepared. You can head over to lec.bingo, that's the full URL, I know, the future is now, to grab your own card, and you can also win special prizes online. And I believe GB has his own card. I forgot it at the you desk. You forgot it. <laughs> This is going great. Um, in any case, lec.bingo, and we're going to take a quick break because we need a break, and we'll see you right back here in just a few minutes. Bye.
Welcome everyone. The intro? Welcome you everyone. Welcome everyone. I was doing the Welcome intro. Welcome everyone. This is a disgrace. Do the intro, medic. <laughs> Welcome everyone. We're here for um, the LEC. Live. Yeah, <laughs> live, obviously. Live. The, the finals of the LEC here in Malmo. It has been 10 years of the LEC, so we've decided to bring a special quiz to you guys. Hell Ready? yeah, we Give have. Them the name. It is the biggest and bestest quiz of the LEC century with Medi and Betty. Wait, a, it's, a decade is 10 years, Betty. Yeah, but a century rhymes better, so we're going with that. Okay. Let's ask some questions. Let's do it. Welcome everyone, we have our first contestant here. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great, how are you? I'm fantastic. Now first, can you, can you please tell us- Can you leave it? <laughs> can you please, please tell us what your name is? My name is Laura, but today I guess I am Orbiana. Nice, very cool. That is an incredible cosplay. Yeah, it's great cosplay. That is so great much job. work, incredible. Queen done. Bee, you might say. Are you <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> um, are you ready for your first question? No. That's okay, fine. Okay, cool, Medic, here we go, first, first question. question. Who was the first champion ever picked in the EU LCS? Was it Nasus? Was it Olaf? Was it Renekton? Or was it Gangplank? Uh, it was Gangplank. That is incorrect. That's incorrect, I'm, sorry. I'm afraid. I you feel do like have we another have opportunity. Oh, it's yeah, okay, you, you have yeah, another yeah. opportunity, because we have another question. If you get it right, you could win a prize. If yeah. you don't, you We're will We're going to get given, the exterminators in. If you're wrong, we will give you a Danish flag. Yeah, okay, here we go. Second question. What is an irrational fear of trees called? Is it arachnophobia, Ooh. arbophobia, Ooh. catagelophobia, <gasps> or dendrophobia? Yikes! Scary. Uh, arbophobia? That is incorrect. Incorrect. It's dendrophobia. dendrophobia. That doesn't make any sense. We put it in there to trick you up. Yeah. What's the Danish flag? Doesn't matter. Next contestant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Who became the British Prime Minister in 1937? Was it A. Aaron Chamberlain? Was it B, David Chamberlain? Was it C, Same. Neville Chamberlain? Or was it D, Andrew Chamberlain? I have no idea. Well, you have four options. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, that is A, because you think it's, it's A? A? Okay, well, congratulations. That's Aaron Chamberlain. Yeah, that's me. Um, Hello. <laughs> David Chamberlain is a real, and the real answer was Neville Chamberlain. So here is an American flag, so you can just hold You have to L hold that proudly here you, in Malmo. As you walk away, you can leave now. Off you go. Okay. Thank you, you very much now. for joining us. Too. I hope you have fun today. Bye. That's what I like Welcome to back, everyone, to the great, the biggest and bestest quiz of the century with Medi Medi. Yay. We Woo. here are in Malmo, and we have new contestants. How are you both doing? Good, great. Yeah, good. Excellent. What are your names? Irina. Which player in the LEC has the most Yumi games? Ooh. Is it Targamus, Meow. Trimby, Mickey, or Lebrov? Specifically Mickey X, sorry. As opposed to the other Mickey. Well, he did play for a while. And the other Mickey. And the other one, yeah. You have to choose an answer. Okay. Uh, let's just say Mickey. Okay, yeah. Well, Mickey is correct. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are you Swedish? No. no. Okay, well, do, this is do, perfect. You know, do you know any Swedish? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, here's the Swedish translation handbook for you so you can learn more Swedish. Congratulations. We have one more question yep. for you. Second question is, in the 1975 film, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, what did the knights who say knee want? Was it a herring, a massage, a shrubbery, or a koi pond? Have you ever seen this film? Can we get the herring, please? Do you have it's the herring? Well, it's a set of the last century, and it came out in 1975. All oh, right, wait. I'm going to say, was it a koi pond? That's just a great answer. You're gonna go with a koi pond. Don't open the herring! You have to open the herring! No, I just want the herring itself. Can you pass me the herring, please? 
Thank you. So we did have some herring for That's Those are meatballs. Herring. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations. Here's some meatballs. We need those meatballs. We're going to take them back in a second. But the answer was a strawberry. Thank you very much for the meatballs, though. That's not herring, my Take care. Bye-bye. Right, here, we do have some herring, just in case you wanted to see it. Goodbye to the biggest and the best quiz on the LEC Century with Meaty Betty. Let's Woo! go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Let's go, LEC. Let's go, LEC. It has been over 1,096 days since these teams have been able to play in front of a crowd this large. I think it's been over three years now since we had the last road show and I think it's great for us and great for everyone who gets to go to Malmo and play and kind of make esports be normal again. The nervousness you feel as you enter the tunnel, the flutter of your heart as you see the size of the stadium, the vibration through your body as they call your name. This moment is what these players live for. Playing in front of these big crowds for very important games and the finals is kind of like what maybe wants to become a pro player in the first place. And now that it's finally back, it just feels so much better. I was always dreaming of being the player that's on stage and I still don't believe that this time is going to be my turn. Rogue have come so close to winning it all, time and time again. Fans respect them for tenacity, their mentality of not giving up. But for Rogue, the only thing they want respect for is winning. Cheering can easily go on the side where he's playing for so long. Just give it to him, you know? It's kind of like a pity thing. And I wouldn't really want that because I want everything I do and every win I have to be hard worked and deserved. And if I don't win, that means I just didn't uh, deserve to win. They always do fine, but they never really make more than expected. The nerves are really getting to them when they play against us. Maybe we have like huge mental edge because lately we just always win. In screams we always win. I think they have like so much issues drafting against us. So I could see them doing fine against other team, but against us it's always gonna be hard. There's the cataclysm now wearing Imiji Pong to stop with the tidal wave coming in as well in the shock wave. Just rips fanatic apart. Each of these players knows that the one they really have to beat is the man in the mirror. It's definitely the biggest moment in my career. It's my first big arena, and on top of that, it's my home crowd in an arena that I've been to as a child. I played like two other finals, but it's still a way bigger moment for me. Larson slides in, but Cavs dives back, a double! Being like the clear number one team the whole year in you, no one stands a chance in best of five against you. It just boosts your confidence so much going into world. Like right? if you're not even the best in you, how can you be the best in the world, right? You don't go into that stadium thinking of how you can beat your opponent, but instead you focus on your own game, your own teammates and your own playstyle. Only by conquering yourselves can you truly be the best. Comp with a lightning crash, Wonder has to flash across the wall. Keep his is going to knock back one, but Comp is on the chase and Comp finds one. He dives into the base, though, but Alcazar step, out the step. Oh, Comp low, Immortal Shield Bow, heals him back up. It's enough for Comp, it's enough for Rogue. I can guarantee you that it's not going to be an easy match and especially this team they want to win so much, right? So I hope it's a banger, but what I can promise you is that I'm actually lifting the trophy. After being on the bottom last year, we did rebuild in an idea to be the best in Europe and to be the best in the world, right? This is how we made the team. So I just want to be back on top. I want to, you know, win back-to-back -back championship in Europe and go towards as the best team in Europe. G2 claim their ninth title! It doesn't matter anymore how hard you have tried or how much you think you deserve it. Only one team will rise above the rest. The only thing that matters is to win. G2 versus Rogue, the two last standing in the LEC summer season. Who will lift the trophy in just a few hours? Will it be G2 or Rogue? Well, one thing is for certain, Goldborg, these have definitively been the two best teams in Europe this year. Most definitely, after playoffs, looking at the bracket we've had for ourselves. G2 starting out in that upper bracket, finding the victories. They most definitely deserve it. And coming down for Rogue as well. 
after the series against Natic, I don't think you can deny it. They found themselves in their comfort spot. They found themselves in a position where not only were they beaten in the first game, they were able to come back from that. I think it's really important that a team like G Rogue specifically can overcome their demons and move on to the finals that, you know, has so consistently not been theirs. And finally, hopefully, for the Rogue fans, they can say they got a title. And we heard it from Jankos there as well, a rebuild for G2, for Rogue also changes, a continuing project, but it's very impressive to see even with those changes, both teams are back on top. Yeah, definitely. Both teams went through a big rebuild in this offseason. Rogue obviously lost in spite and had Sama, two, pre two uh, strong players in the previous iteration, and now they came in with Malrang, was, changed their playstyle completely, obviously Comp, one of the best AD carriers we have in Europe today. G2, on the other hand, built around the core of Jankos and Caps, and with their newer players, with the rookies, they just look so, so good. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I think it's really impressive how both teams managed to, over the year, have some struggles, but always remain on top. Even looking at the summer split in itself, both teams started off pretty poorly, actually. And towards the end of it now, they have been Pretty dominant. I mean, Rogue had a little bit tough, uh, tougher times in the early portion of this playoffs, but even then, the fact that they can lose game one yesterday and still come out like this in game two, three, and four is just really impressive. Incredibly impressive and something that's going to be necessary today as well, because in terms of G2 versus Rogue, 24 to 7, or 6 and 0 in the last two best of fives that they played Reckless. Why is it that this G2 this year matches up so well versus Rogue? So I would say Rogue's main strength is how they play the game very slow and steady, and they're always, almost always at the right place at the right time. But the problem is when you're facing a team like G2, they don't do what other teams do. They play different champions, they play in a different way, the break fight's really hard to pull off because you're getting flanked by Broken Blade on one side, Caps on the other side. And for a team like Rogue, I think that's just a lot to think about at the same time. And, and then G2 just has yeah, a lot of good players on many different lanes, so it's just a little bit too much, I think, for Rogue to think about at the same time, but if they can manage to come into the Drake fight, have the 5v5 in front of themselves, that's when they have their best chance. I also think it's about G2's play style, it's about the mid lane matchup in particular for me, where yesterday Rogue started seeing success when they were able to force control mage matchups for Larsen into Humanoid, but you're not going to be able to do that in the same way against Caps, because Caps' champion pool is just too deep. Like, it's not going to happen. If Caps gets the counter pick, it's going to be the Assassins, maybe the Renex and the AP Varish. You never know what's coming. But I also think that Rogue is coming into this being the team that's not really feeling that pressure. Obviously, they're feeling it on the Rift, but in terms of fan expectations, everyone is expecting G2 to probably take it today. Rogue, though, I feel like they found the style that defined them as well yesterday. Larsen on the control mages, Calm on the hyperscaling AD carries. While they, they, they probably will struggle in today's series, they are certainly a team that has found their way of playing the game, and they will continue to do that. They have, and we just saw some of the uh, the greatest hits, I want to say, from Caps and Jankos from over the years. But uh, in terms of finding a formula and making each other stronger, they are the pedigree of that in Europe, right, Broxa? Yeah, definitely. It's so impressive how Caps and Jankos managed to stick together for so many years now, ever since Caps left Fnatic for G2 at the end of 2018. And, you know, this core, these two players just fit each other so well. Caps being the aggressor, Jankos being the facilitator. Yeah, and I think the same could have been said for when you played together with him. It was always you controlling the game, making sure everything around Caps was in the right place so that Caps could be his best creative self. Because I think when Caps function, function at the highest level is when he can go for plays that aren't really normal to the game. So having someone like you in the jungle, having someone like Jankos in the jungle really facilitates everything around him so that he can be that crazy Caps. And I think it's, it's interesting you bring that up, because I remember back in 2017, 2018, when I was the jungle next to Caps, Dylan, who is also Caps' coach today, would often tell me that my main focus should be to bring the consistency, be the rock of the team, and just make sure that there's structure around him, because then he's going to make plays happen. And most of the time they go well, but in the times where they don't, it's fine. We're still going to have his back, and we're going to bring him back on track. And I think, you know, the fact that they've been able to create this system around Caps and just set him up for success throughout all these years is really impressive. Absolutely, and that's why they got all those titles. But we're going to see if someone else can hoist the trophy today. Maybe third time is the charm for Trimby. He's standing by with Lore. Thank you, Shox. Trimby, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to today. As Shox was saying, this is your third final and you get to play it in a new setting for you. Yesterday was your first on-stage games in front of a crowd. 
and I noticed that throughout the games, you stood up at some point, you were really feeling the vibe. Tell me about the experience and how special it was for you. Uh, well, I mean, I was pretty crazy at the stage. I was like permanently trying to look like around to just try to interact with people. Overall, just, mm -hmm. I don't know, I had an amazing time. I felt like I was just there where I wanted and that was something that you can't really describe. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, even now the guy just screams G2, right? But I actually enjoy it. It's going to be fine then to win against them, right? It's going to be nicer. The audience is going to deliver for sure. And You know what? I don't think you really get opportunities to talk to so many people. So is there anything you want to say to them right now? Let's feel the vibe. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I have no clue what to say to them, but I just hope the series will be a banger and they will enjoy it and support either team they want. Give some love for Trim B. Malmö. As you said, as we said rather, this is your third finals and I have a hard time realizing that you've been in the league for so long and playing your third finals today. How do you reflect on your success and your journey to be there today? Well, I mean, right now I would think that it's my first final just because <laughs> of how everything is. It's like completely different experience. Uh, I can't compare it to the last two, to the one that is here. Uh, yeah, as Shock said, it's third time is the charm. I have such nickname in, in league, <laughs> right? And I did it. I did it before the even split started. So, yeah, I want to keep up to that name and. Yeah, I think we're, we're able to, to make it. And if not, I just want to have fun. That's all that matters in the end. A couple words about G2 maybe, because Targamas was talking about the fact that you guys get nervous playing against them, that you don't usually know what to do. And we know how creative G2 can be, especially flashing with the new picks, something that you can't expect. How hard is it to prep against a team like this? And what kind of feeling do you have thinking about today's series? Uh, I think you're more prepared for yourself, how you want to play instead of how they want to play. Obviously, I mean, they have their way of strategy of how to play and obviously it's good, but, and they're very diversity with it. But on the other hand, you cannot really care about it too much. You just have to play your game. And I feel like last week we didn't play our game. That's why the games look mm -hmm. this way. But yesterday we did play our game and seemed like Fnatic didn't stand a chance. So I hope that today we're going to put on a good show. Third time is a charm, as you said. Hopefully for Rogue and you today, Trimby. Thank you so much for the interview. I'll let you get ready with the team. Thank you. And we're going to talk about this series. Rogue played last week, actually, against G2, as Odoan may talk us through what happened against them. A lot of the time, we are kind of just giving objectives for free and we're not really like trading for anything, and especially in like game one and two. Their understanding about how to approach those situations and how to play around the neutral objectives was just like superior to ours today. Caps diving forward in a 2v1. Caps wins these. Of course, he bloody does. Caps has gone to bed and Claps oh, is back. Oh, baby. G2. Looking like the G2 of old. Demolish Rogue. I felt like everyone was playing really well and when it came to neutral objectives we were just kind of making the wrong decisions. Most of the games it was like already like 23 minutes or something and you already have to fight for the soul. So even if you're outscaling them at that point and your team comp is stronger, you're approaching those fights with the pressure that they're just going to get soul. So it just made those situations a lot more difficult for us. Well then. <laughs> the arena is exploding a fair bit. Uh, and that gives us it's mostly G2 fans, I guess, clapping. But I'm glad that we got to hear from Trimby and I, that we got to hear from Oduwamne as well, because at the top of everyone's mind is We've seen this matchup a week ago, and it wasn't pretty for Rogue. Um, can you summarize, Goldberg? What went wrong for Rogue last week? Well, to not dive into specifics too much, I feel like Rogue actually got what they wanted in a lot of games against G2, but I think once it finally came to that late game, they had a tough time keeping everything together. Quite often would we see them, at least back in that game too, would we see them with a lead, they would get caught off guard, members being too far ahead, and they would actually just lose the fight slowly, and then just lose the game in turn.
Yeah, I think something Trimby mentioned in the interview there is really important for today. Rogue has to find a way how to keep the game rogue-like. Because if it gets this crazy, if it gets this scrappy, then I think G2 just has too much favor. So I think what uh, Trimby mentioned now and what Rogue showed yesterday is really important today in, in today's series, that they make sure the game is more slow and steady, it's more teamfight focused, it's not so much about flanking and stuff, and then I think Rogue has a better chance. And today we're not expecting the craziest early games of all. It's going to be more about making sure that you get to the mid game in a good state, and then it's going to be about the mid and late game team fights. And that's where Rogue couldn't keep up the last time. Like, they were fine in the early game, but once they came to 15, 20 minutes, G2 just rolled them over completely. Yeah, we can see that when we look at the breakdowns of the games as well. It's not like they lost control from the start, but I guess it's also that you can't afford to make any mistakes versus a team like G2. Most certainly not, and, and you see it here on your screen as well. You can see the goal graph where Rogue is actually ahead. G2 is not necessarily like Fnatic where they're super proactive, and that may be something that plays nicely into Rogue, but the things we want to see Rogue has improved on specifically is that mid to late game. And I think we saw glimpses of it yesterday when they were playing up against Fnatic. The fact they got the out team fight them, the Wombo combos we saw, that's a good side as a Rogue fan going into the finals today. When it comes to Rogue, their play style, you just said we like when you have a little bit of scaling. I think we tracked that yesterday as well. Uh, their team fights can be on point. Is that how you would describe the Rogue style right now, Anno Summer 2022? The Rogue style is the traditional way of playing League of Legends. Hmm. You have a tank, tops, and frontline. You have a jungler with a gauge. You have a control mage mid, and then you have an enchanter with an AD carry in the bot lane. This is how they want to play. This is where they're comfortable, and this is where, once they started forcing those control mage matchups in the mid lane yesterday, they started looking really, really dominant versus Fnatic. And I think this is why G2 has been such a tough matchup for them, because G2 plays the complete opposite of this, with a lot of crazy picks, maybe carry top lane instead of the tank, maybe a mid lane that's out of out of the ordinary, an assassin or a virus like last week. So I think for Rogue, it's just, just about making sure that they get the direction of the draft the way they want instead of the way G2 wants. And one thing that was really interesting yesterday was seeing Balrang on the Javan and the Javan priority just skyrocketing because he was massive on that pick and it's a champion that we know Yankers can also play really well. So normally for the jungle in particular, you focus on Poppy, Trundle, and those are probably still going to be prioritized, but once they're down, Javan is going to be massive. What a superstar performance from Malrang uh, yesterday indeed. A big reason of why Rogue made it here to the final. Uh, when it comes to the early games, we've seen different looks, I feel like, from the different teams throughout the summer and also playoffs. So when you look at playoffs specifically, could there be an opportunity here for Rogue versus G2? Yes, yeah, so at first you could be like, oh, G2 doesn't do too much as, like, say, let's say, like teams like Fnatic does, and that could be a weak point, but Teams like Rogue doesn't necessarily do that either, so this is actually just a leeway more certainly for Rogue where they can get to that scaling aspect. I also think when you look at trading objectives on the map, you might not see it in the stats, but G2 has an incredible first trade priority in Rogue series against Fnatic yesterday. As we got to the later stages of the game, they started prioritizing the Heralds, so we might be set up for a different stylistic as well in terms of the macro prioritization, where they want to get those neutral objectives going. Indeed, uh, when it comes to that flexibility in draft that we may see, I think we often say that G2 has high flexibility. Do you agree with that, Martin? And where does it mostly lie for them? I think it mostly lies in the mid lane, actually, and that is a focal point of today because now Rogue is uh, red in the first game, so I think it's really important to try to give Larsen the counter pick. But if, let's say, they were to be blue, then how do you figure out the mid matchup? Yeah. I'm not really sure. I think it also comes from the top lane in Broken Blade, and they have shown a lot of weak side style of play in the bot lane uh, with the Seraphine, with the Senna. So I think it's really important that Rogue find a way to defuse this topside thing that G2 has going instead of just attacking bot, which has shown to not be effective against G2. Okay, uh, well, as we start talking about the bot lane, let's head over to Lore, because she is standing by with Flacket. Thank you. Thank you, Shox. And thanks, Flacket. Thank you. I love this facial touch behind you. Yeah. Of the dog. Feels like home, but... Um, Shots was talking about the matchup and how good Rogue did also yesterday. I want to talk about the bot lane. What is your take on Rogue and the way they played against Fnatic, but also the bot lane that stepped up pretty strong, especially with Lucian Ami? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Rogue bot lane played really well yesterday. I think, uh, I mean, I think Fnatic bot lane didn't play as, uh, you know, as they as, uh, didn't play their expectations, I would say. But I think Rogue, uh, especially, as you said, with Lucian Nami, was looking like very dominant. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is going to be a banger today. Hopefully it's going to be a banger, because I talked to Targamas before 
we took uh, this live on broadcast and he was actually telling me that you guys were expecting so much to be playing against Fnatic that you didn't prep for Rogue. Tell me about that. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we expected to play Fnatic, but it, it wasn't like super sure. Uh, as well, we wanted to play Fnatic because uh, we wanted to fuck Fnatic. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we couldn't. Uh, but yeah, most of our preparation was against Fnatic, yeah. It went super well for you guys the last time you played against Rogue. Do you think it's going to go the same way today, given how they stepped up yesterday against Fnatic? I mean, uh, hopefully, hopefully it will. Hopefully it will. <laughs> Do you hear them? It's the first time you're playing in an arena like this. How does it feel to have so many fans cheering for you guys? I mean, it, it mega bangs. I don't even hear anything, but it's so incredible. I don't know. So many feelings right now. All right. All right. There's something I wanted to do with you, and I want to do with you guys in Malmö, because Flakhead, you have a ritual. You have something that people know you for. That's right, this one. Yeah. So on the count of three, we're going to go through. Okay, you ready? Malmö. You ready, Malmö? Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God. Amazing, Banker. Thank, thank you, you guys. so much, Flaket. Best of luck today, and Sharks back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I know there's some people who like don't like this suit. Well. They can suck on it because the whole arena just did it. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Uh, this guy, I, I feel like he is so exuberant, right, in terms of personality, and it also translates onto the rift. Of course, Reckless um, is the guy that came in after you and was so completely different because he is such a rookie player, a younger player, that really still has to be molded. What have you found of the bot lane evolution of G2 this, uh, this year? I think on a personality level, it seems like very much Capsa-like, and that's nice to have someone next to him that is a bit more goofy. And I think for the bot lane, they have found really good success with playing weak side and sort of like almost a carry Targamas style, which yeah. is really interesting because most teams play the more supportive support. But with Targamas on the team, I feel like he does really well on so many different kind of champions. He's playing the Senna uh, in their last series and both games doing super well. So I think it's, it's a very different style to what you're used to in the bot lane. It's, and it's going to be a hard puzzle to solve for Rogue today. And most definitely that center is a big thing as well. I think we'll see it uh, quite often today. If not picked, then most certainly banned as well. I think the scary thing about center is not only the fact that Takamas had a stellar series on it last time. We saw it 100% kill participation in the first two games of the series, but also the fact he's not the only one on the team that plays it. It can go over to Flakkit. They can play the Yasuo with it. They have so much flexibility in terms of what they want to do with this bot lane. And they've already proven that they're happy to do it into Yumi and whatever teams want to bring out. Yeah, and I think specifically for the Senna, the interesting thing Targamas does is that he goes Swifties on the first base instead of Dirk, which would be much more for the lane. So he buys the Swifties, he runs to the top lane to cover, he runs around with his jungler, and he's just much more alive on the map than you would normally see from a Senna. And I think that is the correct solution for the pick in a team like G2, where you have so many different carry threats. And uh, it could be as simple as banning Senna today, but then, as you said, you play it on two rolls, so... You also have to keep in mind the Seraphine and how many bands you really want to put to the bot lane. Um, yeah, there's a lot of carry threats on G2. It's hard to find three bands that would make sense, I think. It was interesting because earlier today, the three of us were discussing the, the draft possibilities coming into the day and how, if you're rogue, you're going to approach G2. And the best case is to get a standard bot lane where a comp and trimby can really shine on something like the Civet, the Siri, but it's just so hard to force that scenario against G2. Still, Senna has been so dominant for them, so it's probably going to be banned, but they still have so many ways that they can go. They absolutely do, but I love that you called out Comp and Trimby. Comp yesterday on fire once again uh, against a very difficult bot lane matchup in Fnatic Reckless. It's been incredible how he stepped up to the plate. Yeah, especially yesterday, it looked like they just had Fnatic's number uh, from game two onwards. And I think it could be partly the Lucianami. It didn't seem like Fnatic had a good answer for the Lucianami. And I'm not sure if G2 does either. So we might as well see, or we're very likely to see a Lucian ban today. And then you keep the Senna ban in mind that we just mentioned, and maybe the Seraphine ban as well. And we're all of a sudden looking at a completely different series than last time, 
when Senna Seraphine had two games out of three from G2 side. Yeah, and that AD carry, I feel like it's going to be so volatile in terms of what we will receive from the ban phase. Like, is Draven the things that's going to come out? Is it going to be the Callista? And then again, are we going to see the Silas being banned again from the side of Larson? Because yesterday when he had the control mage going on, well, Silas seems to be a big problem. Actually, any champion that has that playmaking capability, like an Akali as well to shut that down, might be something Rogue will be struggling with. And that's the flexibility coming out from G2 as well. Because Caps has been popping on Asir, he's been packing on these champions with agency, he's going to be a threat today. They do step onto the stage cold in comparison to Rogue. Uh, Jankos is going to have a tall task ahead. I think we talked yesterday about the fact that Malrong has such an X factor coming into the year, and then players were saying, oh, we, we can figure him out. But it seems that he has evolved, and he did just what Rogue needed yesterday. What was that? Well, I still remember clearly at the start of spring that there was a lot of players who were vocal about Malorang and saying, ah, his style is so bad because he's not really farming and it's just us who are bad because we're dying to all these openings. But Malorang proved yesterday really clearly that he can play against one of the best teams in Europe and he's still going to be all over the map killing everyone whenever he wants to, which I think is so impre impressive, especially at the highest level. Because it's not like solo queue where everyone's overextending. They know where he is or they're supposed to know most of the time. But it doesn't matter, the guy is simply too creative. And it also just felt like yesterday they found out what his key role needed to be leading into that mid to late game. If he had something that could set up the team, like that Javin, or later the Wukong, or anything that really just had CT to help the team in a team fight scenario, that's really where they find the most prowess with Malmang as well. They don't necessarily need the early game agency, it's nice to have it on the trundle every now and then, but the big one for Malrung is when you get to be flashy with the CC. Uh, is Malrung going to be a possibility for Ro? Because you've talked so much about how G2 can flank you from both sides, but if he has his eye on the prize, he could also fill that role possibly? Definitely, yeah. And I think the most interesting thing for Jungle today is how G2 has been popping in all of their games. And yesterday they showed up big with the Jarvan, and Jankos is also a big Jarvan player. So how high is the Jarvan priority today? Could it be that they just first begin in game one already with Poppy and Trundle out, for example? And what does Malrang play then? Yeah. Or could it be that they get it on the one, two, G2 loses that game and then the German priority goes up even more. Gonna be really interesting pick and bans. And in terms of the pick and bans, we can always expect some spice from G2. And last week, Cap showed us his flexibility with a Varus pick into Azir. So let's hear what he said about his champion, Ocean. So Varus is like kind of like an old school Asir counter, like maybe season five, season six, like uh, many years ago. Um, and I mean, me, me taking it out the, the today was just like trying to figure out some things I could play against Asir. And I tested the Varus and it worked quite well. I think back then you used to go Lethality, but nowadays I think uh, AP is just better than, than Lethality. Like AP Varus got some buffs and I just don't think Lethality is in the best state right now. Uh, I also just think that um, it's good to pull off some, some old school counters because there's a lot of younger mid laners in LSE, and they might not even know about like the old counters. Uh, same way I went with Anivir against uh, Jojo Pune at MSI. He, he probably doesn't even know what it does, right? So playing some some old meta champions, uh, because I've actually been playing since season one, right? So playing some very old meta champions mid lane uh, can definitely catch off a lot of the the newer guys in the LSE. Awesome. Uh, shout out to Noe as well. I saw a lot of Twitter comments that were like, he also plays it. Uh, but yeah, Caps, it's really cool because we, I keep thinking in my head, is like, oh, Caps, he's like, he hasn't been around for that long, but he's been following everything for so long. And it seems like he has a brain trust of all these possible counters built up. Yeah, it's definitely funny thinking of Caps as a veteran now because me and him joined Fnatic in 2017. And, you know, everything has just gone so fast since then. You know, we've been around for so many years at this point. But one thing, that Caps has always been known for, even when me and Martin played with him, was the fact that he was always so eager to bring new picks out in scrims to try everything, and then later to convince the coaches to pull it out on stage. So seeing him play something like the AP Varus is so good to see. Yeah, I think he's one of the few players actually that go into a series and he has not pre-decided anything. He can play every champion in the game in any scenario in the game. And I think that's why it's really important that Rogue figure out what to blind in mid on blue side and on red make sure that Larson gets the counter pick so he doesn't end up in a matchup like the Varus Asir one or like an assassin on Caps and a mage on Larson because then I think Caps is just too creative with how he plays and he can really control the game from mid uh, already in the early game. Especially since last time we saw these two teams play, Asir was that blue one priority. I think after this evolution we've seen, that will actually not be the case. I think having that more high value on the counter pick for the mid laners is going to matter more. And I think specifically for Larson on red side, making sure he's in a comfortable spot in the mid lane, like we saw when he got to have a control mage versus control ways matchup with Humanoid yesterday, is going to be hugely important for Rogue. But at the same time, G2 have shown countless of times that they don't really mind whatever they put caps on. He's going to be there doing damn well on it anyway. 
I'm just wondering one thing. I have a very important question for you, Larson. Which one of Larson's champions do you think Caps can play Vayne into? Is there gonna be an angle? <laughs> Uh, actually, there might be an angle if he went TF. I wouldn't be surprised if Caps played an AD carry with Cleanse against TF. But I also don't think that is Larsen's plan today. I think Larsen's plan today is to play a mage at all costs. And then Caps just has to be the one to counter. Mm. The interesting thing with that is that G2 doesn't really re rely on their early game to win the game. I feel like they actually don't mind going even in the early game yeah. because they're so good at the Drake fights and the, the objectives in general, the Baron, the Herald. So I don't think they even mind if Larsen were to be winning his lane because that 20 CS lead won't do anything when Caps gets the flanking later on the Drake fight. We saw it last week as well with the Dragon fights. Yesterday, high priority on the Heralds and a lot of opportunity for Rogue specifically. Do you see a shift there in their objective approach? Yeah, and I think it's also the right approach because I feel like when you're playing this slow and steady gameplay, you really need to be ahead in the game. Because if you're slowly losing, then at some point you're going to have to fight and then you're not going to win that fight. So I think the Herald over the Drake is the right approach. But then if you do give two, two Drakes, the third one is really important. You cannot make mistakes in that fight. And I think G2 is just that good at finding the flanks and finding the creative place that that third fight, the third, the third Drake fight, might be really hard for them. Yeah, we have to give them their credit there. But uh, it is interesting how the paths have converged. And it is Larson versus Caps at the centerpiece, I feel like, of this best of five. Because of yesterday, the key to the best of five seemingly also being for um, Rogue to ban out the Silas. And Larson had an unbelievable series packed on the fact that he's playing in front of his home crowd. The stresses are high. He said it wasn't bothering him whatsoever. But do you also feel that he could very well be the key to Rogue's first championship here in Sweden? There's no doubt about that. We saw it yesterday. Once Rogue found a way to set up Larsen for success, that is when they really succeeded. And especially today against Caps, if Larsen can just even go even in lane and then start showing up in the team fights, that is their key to success. You have to neutralize Caps. So much of it is going to be execution based. And once again, take it back to what we talked with, what went wrong against G2 last time. The fact that members are caught off guard, they overextend themselves. When you are playing this matchup where if they get the control mage versus control mage, and it's going to be a battle for range in your plane, you cannot make one misstep. And I think I'm looking at Larson today to really hoping that he can keep the nerves cool and take home what he's been wanting for so long. It's going to be so incredibly important. That leaves us to predictions, may I remind everyone. Everyone was wrong yesterday. Rogue One versus Fnatic. So I'm wondering what's going to happen today. You have a little bit of time to motivate your choices. Broxa, who wins and why? Yesterday, I was really impressed by Rogue's ability to adapt and find their problems and fix them after the first game versus Fnatic. That was a pretty brutal stomp. But, oh, oh. They're waiting for your prediction. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be pretty simple. Rogue, very pr impressive adapting skills. I still don't have, think they have what it takes to beat G2, so I'm going to say 3-1 G2. 3-1 G2 from Broxa, GB. <sighs> yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? I feel like G2 is still seen as favorites going into it, and I would have felt like that if I had not seen yesterday's series as well. I think. Rogue had a lot of good adaptations against Fnatic to kind of get the ball rolling. And I think that will make today's series way closer than it was first time they played against each other. But my gut feeling, and when I, when I see the two teams against each other, I still have to go with a 3-2 for G2. Okay, that's two for G2. Reckless, I know you were conflicted in the green room. Yeah, I was very conflicted actually, because I think if Rogue can somehow figure out the red side, and they're also starting on the red side, this could actually be three games with them on the red side, and if they, they then are winning every, every one of those games, they actually win the series. So depending on how the first game goes, I think they actually have a good chance in this series, but it's just all about the mid lane matchup. It's all about figuring out how can you put Larson in a good situation, and I'm not sure if they actually have what it takes to do that, so I would go 3-2 G2. 3-2 G2. That is three votes from my analysts for G2 Discord also agrees. In fact, 3-0 for G2. I mean, they have a lot of the crowd. They have a lot of the motivation and also the pedigree coming into these final. But this team on the other side, Rogue, is so incredibly hungry. It really truly feels like with Larson in front of his home crowd, this could be the time that they take it all home. But you have to right now. We're moments away from the LEC Summer Grand Final. Rogue or G2, tonight we will find out who will take it all. Let's get ready for our opening ceremony.
10 years of excellence, 20 seasons of competition. No matter the year, the meta, or the name on our league, peak League of Legends has come from Europe. Our players are to be celebrated, respected, and feared. Our teams who entertain, evolve, and dominate here and across the globe. And they are supported by all of you, the best fans in the world. This is our story. Melma, you know when to sing. Above the days come, will you be enough? Or will you walk away the sun? Look to your left, to your right, make the pain be high. Cause we all face the and we stray from the
looking for their 10 LEC title. Melmer, meet G2 Esports. In the top lane, Broken Blade. In the Choco, Niankos. In the mid lane, In the bottom lane, Flacket. And in support, Targamas. Playing in their third LEC title on the hunt for their first. Let me introduce your Saturday champion, silencing the haters, shutting down their opponents. It's Rogue! In the top lane, oh, go one day! In the jungle, Maran! In the mid lane, in the bot lane, Pump. And it's a bot, Trimby. Ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else, Malmo and everyone around the world, 